welcome you to our Wednesday evening virtual services. Uh, myself and Pastor Joey, what we had in mind for these Wednesday evening services was a time to where we can actually interact with you online, um, to not be something so much that you just watch, but something that you would interact with. And so we, we just want you to just to take the time to, um, to like, to comment, to send in uh, questions, whatever you might have on your heart tonight as we go through these topics. And we've tried to pick challenging topics. If you do want to give and sow into the ministry, then you can also do that on our website at stonyrunchurch.com um, and, and just click the, um, the give button there. It's really easy and simple to go through. Or you can mail it to us by the old traditional snail mail at 12481 Harnett Dunn Highway, Dunn, North Carolina, 28334. Once again, I'm Rick Kelly, and I'm looking forward to um, interacting with you, and I just pray that this will bless you tonight. Uh, guys, welcome tonight. Um, I, I'm glad you're joining us online. <clears throat> there we go. We're up now, I think. Um, I'm glad you're joining us online, guys, uh, for another Wednesday night, virtual night with Pastor Rick and I. Yes. Um, as we're still studying uh, First Peter. Um, uh, guys, make sure, like it said, if you watched the video beforehand, uh, subscribe on YouTube, like, share this on Facebook, get the word out. Uh, guys, we're, uh, this is a great teaching. Uh, in depth, I think we go a little in depth on it. Um, so we want people to hear it. We want people to be be brought to to know who Christ is. Uh, so help out with that, guys. Um, so uh, if there's really no pending business, let's go to prayer. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll get started Amen. tonight. Uh, join us in, uh, as we pray while you're at home. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, God, for this opportunity. We can come together, Lord God. It may not be in the same building tonight, but Lord God, we're touching hearts, Lord Jesus. It may not be live, Lord God. It may be a replay, but Lord God. Your word would be heard. Your that's will right. will be done. And that's what we're trusting in tonight. You're a sovereign God. Yes. And we're thankful for that, Lord God. Be with us tonight. Lord God, touch those who are battling sickness at home. Yes. Those who are still fighting COVID. Those who might be in the hospital. Right. Lord God, we're looking for you for a healing in their life. Lord God, be with us in this word tonight as well. Let it touch hearts. Let, it, let us apply it to our lives. Lord God, let's show the community, the world, who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Also, one of the things I want to add is if you have any questions, you know, maybe as we go through a topic or we go through something and, and you have questions, well, feel free to uh, to just uh, put them in the chat or whatever so that we can go ahead and um, address those maybe at a later night. Maybe we have a, a Wednesday night where we just address questions, uh, you know, but but please interact with us. We, we really want this to be interactive where where it's something where you feel like that you can you can interact with us um, as we as we kind of learn and grow together because I think that's what this is about. It's about one another. Remember, the church has always been about one another. It's not it's not a a, a solitary uh, walk with Christ, but it's a walk together as the body of Christ. So Amen. we just want to make sure that we we interact one with another. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, thank you once again. Let's get started tonight. All right, Pastor Rick, you want to lead us out? I I will. I will. So tonight's uh topic is learn to live in peace. I mean, you talk about uh, something that folks need. I can't tell you how many people, Brother Joey, say, I just need some peace, man. I just need peace. You know, peace like a river in my life. I, I need peace. My life is so, so dramatic. Um, so I want to go ahead and read from 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, verses 8 through 17, and that's what we're going to cover tonight. Um, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 17. If you have your Bibles at home, open it up. I mean, and open the Word of God up and, and, and follow along with us and read the Word because I believe the Word is powerful, it's mighty, it's awesome, um, it's life-changing. So I'm going to read from 1 Peter chapter 3, starting in, in verse 8 through 17. It states this, Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tender-hearted. Be courteous. Not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this, 
that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better, if it is the will of God, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Wow. Brother Joey, what a, what a, what a mouthful, there's, right? There's a lot there, is it, Pastor Man, man I mean, Man. So I, I'm, I'm looking at all this, and, and I, it's, it's absolutely, um, it's a life-changing word tonight. I believe that, that the way that we change how we interact with the world begins with us. Amen. I mean, what we do. Um, I want to kind of start with, uh, with two verses. It says, He who would love life and see good days... Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. I mean, that those verses there, 10 and 11 out of, out of 1 Peter chapter 3, I feel like that that's kind of what we're concentrating on tonight. How, how do you love life? How do you see good days? Well, you've got to refrain what you say and, and, and turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So this is an active thing, Joey. It's something that we need we need to do. Well, how do we seek peace and pursue it in life? Well, we got three teaching points tonight, and I'm gonna we'll jump on in on this. Um, the first teaching point is this: think about what you say. Okay, and if you, man, that <laughs> opens a whole can of worms right there. The second one: think about what you do, and the third: think about your attitude towards others. So we'll go ahead and jump in tonight on teaching point number one. Think about what you say. So, I'll, Brother Joey, I'll let you kind of kind of jump in a little bit here as we go. Proverbs gives a lot about this, about Tunnel. how, I, and it, well, I would say even Scripture. There's so much about uh, the power in the tongue and, yes. and and the power we wield as Christians. Uh, a lot of times, I know we said before, knowledge is power, and sometimes we forget who who we are. That's right. Uh, and, and I don't think there's anything with daily affirmations reminding myself who God calls me to be, uh, a child of God, uh, um, a part of his family. I'm, inherit, I'm going to get an inheritance who, through his. Right. And, and, and then in the other side of the spectrum, we, we, we tend to forget is when, when we slip up, we say things that we can't take back. Once, <laughs> once it comes out, it's, it's out. It's there. It's out of the bag. It is. Um, and, and, and do the, the hurt. I know that's not been just done to me to all, so many other people, and probably the hurt I've done to people. Yes. Um, yes. By by opening my mouth um, before I thought, yes. before I, I discerned, um, man, and, and still a struggle today. Right. And uh, to give you a little example of, of how much we speak in a day. Yes. Um, the average person speaks fifty thousand words in one day. So if you if you printed that out, that would be fifty print pages, fifty pages in print that we say, um, you know. So that's like twenty percent of our life oh, we spend speaking. And so many people probably say a whole lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> there's some. So you think there's some that's more like a hundred thousand, right? Lord help us. Um, but yeah, so you got to be careful. I mean, because I mean, Scripture says. I mean, I believe everything is. I mean. It's written down. It this stuff is, it will. <laughs> It'll be recalled back to you what you say. It will. It will. Um, we'll be held accountable for our words. Yes, sir. I mean, that, that's true. First Peter 3.10 says, He who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Wow. So, so most human conflict, I mean, when you think about it, the majority of the fights that we get in are verbal. Amen. Right, and we don't usually usually we don't we don't throw punches, but we do verbal punches. We we yes. speak, and and that's how how we fight. And and most human conflict begins on the verbal level at work, in our marriages, um, in friendships, um, at church, everywhere. The verbal conflict is what takes 
you know, most folks don't go around punching people. I mean, that no. just, that's just not. But we sure can use our words as weapons. Uh, amen. Uh, it, uh, I don't know if Pastor Rick probably can get to this, but Proverbs twelve eighteen um, compares it to the tongue um, of the. Hold on, let me read Would it. Would you like I me can't. to read it for you, Joey? Yeah, go I got ahead. it right here. Pastor um, Rick's got it. He's going to read it for Proverbs twelve eighteen tells us this. Now think about what the word says here. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Amen. I mean, I, I, the, the the damage that can be done. I mean, I, I definitely don't know what it is to be stabbed. I mean, some people do. Um, I, our, our Savior was stabbed. Uh, and then uh, the, the, and he compares it. Peter compares uh, the uh, words we use to being stabbed with the sword. I mean, he would know. He cut off a person's ear. You know what I mean? Right. This, is, this is something that, that he he was he has um, some recollect when he was writing this. I wonder if he thought about that. And, and he thought the words I say could do just as much damage. And they can. I mean, that whole that. that whole sticks and stones may break my bones, yeah. but names will never hurt me. Um, that's really not true because words can pierce just like a sword. I mean, they can do just as much damage. As a matter of fact, um, wounds, physical wounds, over time heal. Yes. But our wounds that have been, people have spoken things over us and to us, sometimes those wounds never heal in people's lives. They don't, you know, they have to work that out. Yeah. Um, and they're very yeah. deep and penetrating. So, so that whole thing. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword where they just kind of, I mean, and I know you've been around somebody with a sharp tongue before. So you, y'all listening to me tonight, I know you've been around someone with a sharp tongue. You've been cut to the quick by someone that has spoken something over you or to you that absolutely just cut right down to the, you know, the, the, the innermost part of your being. Uh, yeah, and, and, and we're talking about living in peace. Yeah, I think. we're supposed to be living in peace. Yeah. But we use our words like a sword. Yeah, it, it's so crazy, um, and um, it, we got to understand the words we use are very important. Uh, yeah. it, they really expose the condition of our heart, what, what we put in. Um, it, it's amazing, and, and I, I wanted to read this. I got this, and while I was studying for this uh, uh, in, a, in one of the commentaries, and it was talking about different types of heart. You know, our, what kind of heart do you have? It says a critical heart, it gives disparaging words. A bitter heart gives stinging words. A self-righteous heart gives judgmental words. A thankless heart gives words of complaint. Now, on the other side of that, it talks about a loving heart gives uplifting words. A contented heart gives words of faith. A joy-filled heart gives grateful words. And a humble heart gives words of acceptance. I mean, if we really want to analyze where we're standing with Christ and God, where am I with you in, in my peace? Uh, and because I believe the peace is something that's given to us. Yes. Um, and so it, where am I tonight? If we look at your words, what are you saying? How do you live? And I'm not talking about when you mess up one time. Yeah. Right, uh, we, right. God's going to give you an overlook on that. But it's something that you continue to live in, something I continue to go after. I, I can continue to talk down all the time. You can open up social media and see people who continually talk down all the time. What kind of, look at your heart, guys. This, if you want peace, then you need to pursue it. Right. You need to go after Christ. If you go after God, God will instill with you his Holy Spirit. Yes. And that's what he says, Amen. I'll give you. That's how you obtain his peace. And you were talking, Joey, about, about like different types of hearts, a yes. critical heart. Um, you know, things that the, the, the words that someone uses, although we can't see someone's heart in them, the Bible tells us that a man is known by his fruit yes. in his life. And if we have the fruit of the Holy Spirit Amen. right, coming out of us, why, you're not going to be speaking critically. You're not going to be condescending. You're not going to speak hate and, and harm and all those things. If the Spirit of God is truly living and residing in you, then you can't stay like that. Oh, because cause God's the, he's, he's, he's giving us the power through his Holy Spirit to, to overcome the flesh. Amen. I mean, and I think that a lot of that stuff is just flesh. We 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 always want to retaliate. Oh man! Right, and that's when and that, last that, week that, or whatever that, it was, we said God says vengeance that is loves mine. The flesh. You know, so so we we want we want to take revenge, and and we need to make sure that that that's not how we're speaking. Yes, sir. Um, I think Proverbs eighteen twenty one, which I love this this verse because it it shows you what um the power 
of, of words are. Proverbs 18.21 tells us this, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Mm. So I want you to understand that, that you can speak life and you can speak death. And, and depending on how you speak and what you speak will we'll, we'll, um, show us what's going to happen in the people around us. Amen. Right? I mean, we can speak life to people around us or we can speak death to people around us. And I'm here to tell you that if you have a critical spirit, if all you speak is criticism and different things all the time, then what you're going to find out is your circle of friends is going to get thinner and thinner and thinner, because I don't know about you, Brother Joey, but I don't want to be around somebody that's critical all oh, the time. Man, why would I don't, don't want to be around someone that's bringing my... Because, look, it's hard enough, y'all, to live in this fallen world. I mean, there's Amen. enough criticism, there's enough hate out there that, to go around. We, you know, and, and we don't need to live like that. We don't have to live like that. No matter where we find ourselves, we can still speak life, and we can speak love, and we can speak those things, uh, encouraging word, even in the midst of a... Of a of a tumultuous existence why we still are able to do that i mean think about that living as a christian being set apart holy if we really just started speaking in a way that the world around us was not speaking yes and, and lifting people up showing more grace to those who don't who you think that don't deserve it and being careful uh, with our words yes. oh, because man. words are powerful they are very powerful and 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 they carry weight but they also carry consequences. Yes, sir. You can't just throw things out there and expect it. Oh, well, that, that's no, I, I'm sorry. You know, and you're like, no, you're not. <laughs> you, just, you just stuck me deep. I mean, <laughs> and, then, and you can't take it. Once you stick it out there, you can't take it back. I mean, no. you know, the old toothpaste out of a tube, you know, analogy where, where words are like toothpaste out of a tube that once you squeeze it out, you can't put it back. No matter how hard you try, and the words we speak cause damage. Yes. Um, even when we apologize, even when we're, and we are sincerely, we can be sincerely, you know, sorry, but the damage has been done. Going even back, being careful what we say, I mean, right now, um, special political things, I, as a Christian, I, I think above all else, we, we definitely need to watch what we say. Um, don't be so judgmental. Um, don't don't be so condescending. Don't be, and we're very passive aggressive about it on social media and stuff like that. Guys, this is a time we definitely, definitely need to be showing people. And who, we who we should is. let our light shine brightly. Oh, that the, the, who we serve and who we're, what we're about. Um, and, and like they always told me when I was a kid, and I know everyone has heard this, but they always said, if you don't have anything good to say, <laughs> don't say anything at all. Yes, sir. The power of the unspoken word sometimes is far greater than the power of a spoken word. Amen. When you know when to just zip it and just let it go. Um, and I think that that's important that we realize that we don't have to um, speak, you know, even in the midst of hurt, even in the even when we're like, man, that has made me so mad that I'm, you know, I'm going to get them back. Well, God doesn't want us to retaliate. God wants us to to love people and try to figure out ways to, to reconcile. Doesn't mean you got to not address it, but it means that you don't have to retaliate. Yes, sir. I think that that's, that's a big, you know, talk less, practice silence when necessary. Yep. There's sometimes I get in a crowd of people where I don't say anything. The reason I don't say anything is because I got nothing good to say. Oh, yeah. And so I just. Pssst. I mean, because the consequences are far more than hurting myself. Yes. It's more damaging to Christ and his kingdom yes. for me to run my mouth about things because even if I don't even think it's related to Christ, if people consider me a Christian, right, then that hurts God, especially when I'm, I'm showing, I'm running my mouth about uh, politics or anything like that in that matter. Uh, I think it's a time that we set aside and, and sit back and just like you said, be quiet. Try to try to love people. I, I mean, mean it's, it's one thing standing against abortion. Yeah, well, or, absolutely. Or something and we like are against travesty. abortion. Yeah. And we're against all these things. But it's and one thing to be so outspoken um, about something that you are willing to hurt people, not lead them to Christ. Yes, and we want to try to lead them. We want to draw them with cords of love. Yes, sir. I mean, that's what Christ, you know, draw them with cords of love. All right, well, let's go to teaching point number two. So we kind of hit the whole thing about be careful with what you, what you say, you know. Um, but teaching point number two, think about what you do. <laughs> I mean, 
Man, I'm going to tell you, actions, and, and here's another one, actions many times speak louder than words. Amen, I mean, you they know, do. You can say something, but your actions will, will betray your, your true intent. So I'm going to read from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 17, and kind of kind of just set this up again, because I, I feel like it's important that we, we stay with the word, we stay in the word, Amen. because that's, you know, that's, we are the people of the book. Amen. I mean, we've, we've got to be. If I don't have this, I'm of, nothing at all. Word right? of God, right? So in chapter 3, verse 10, it says, For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better, if it's the will of God, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Wow. Mm. Once again, it's tough it's, right there. It's, it's, and, and, and being a Christian, it's more than just stopping doing sinful behavior. Yes, sir. It's also what you do. Amen. I, I, you have to look at both sides of the spectrum on that. Um, so many times I hear non Christians saying, Well, I don't want to be a Christian because you don't do this, you don't do that. Or, well, I, I know there's some things I did cut out of my life when I became a Christian. Uh, God brought conviction. Um, because they will end up bringing destruction in my life. But there's so many things that he opened the door for me to do. That's right. And we forget about that so many times, especially when we're, we're, we're trying to lead people to Christ. We're giving examples. I mean, we're called to love our neighbors. We're called to, to take care of the, uh, the stand up for injustice, to uh, take care of the orphans, That's the right. widows. That's right. That's right. These, these things that God has called us to do. That's right. And it tells us in verse 11, it says, let him turn away from evil. So turn from evil. That's the part that we talk about. Stop doing the bad stuff. Amen. Right? But it says, and do good. So it not just stop what you're doing, but stop what you're doing and then do good. Okay? Let him seek peace and pursue it. Um, being a peace, the Bible says blessed are the peacemakers. Amen. Right? I mean, that's, that's one of the Beatitudes. And, and so we need to make sure that we, we, we do good, we seek peace, and we pursue it. And you say, well, why does it matter? Well, because in verse 12, it tells us this. It says, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. Man. I mean, I want, you know, some, I don't know about you all, but sometimes I wonder, is God hearing my prayers? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that, that the heavens are, 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 you know, like steel or something, and it's just not getting through. And is God hearing my prayers? But the word of God tells me the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. OK, but it says, but the face of the Lord is against those who, who do evil, man. OK, now now I want you to think about this. Where do you want God's face? Do you want God's face with you or do you want God's face against you? Amen. I mean, because I, I want, want the God, smile of God. On I want me. God facing me. I want Amen. God paying attention to who, who Joey is and, and what Joey is. I mean, because I want God to answer my prayers. I want God to hear me. Yes. Uh, and, 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 and that's, that's major. No, uh, absolutely. Man. And that, I, I mean, when you think about this, um, Proverbs 16, 7. I got a lot of Proverbs going on tonight <laughs> because cause Proverbs is very practical. It that's is. something that teaches you how to live. It, it gives you wisdom. It gives you things. Proverbs 16, 7 says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Man. That's a powerful word. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. I'm here to tell you that, that I need my enemies to be at peace with me. Amen. Amen. I mean, I need to, I need to be, be that, that's powerful. And so it does matter what we do. When our ways please the Lord, 
I mean, and so we want to be Christ-like. And I know nobody, we don't like sanctification anymore. We don't like holiness. We don't like to talk about that. But our number one goal as a believer should be to be Christ-like, to be more like our Savior every day and allow the Holy Spirit of God to give us the power Amen. to change. And so we need to, we want to have our ways to please the Lord. I, I will just say this, that God cooperates with us when we do good, but he thwarts our efforts when we do evil. Yep. So if, you're, if you feel like God's resisting you, then maybe you need to check either your motivation Come on. or your actions or your speech or, or whatever it might be. I mean, because God will absolutely try to thwart the evil things in this world. Amen. He will work with us when we're, when we're with him and we're in his will and we're doing good. But when we are trying to do evil, he will come against us and, we, and, make, and make it stop. We, we forget. We, when we live in a culture and a world that paints God as love. And God is love. And I never forget that. But he is just as much wrath as he is love. I think it's that. And it, we forget who he turns his wrath upon. Yes, the unrighteous, the, the ungodly. Unrighteous. I mean, those that are at war. Remember that what, when we, before we knew Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we were at enmity Amen. with God, which means we were enemies with God. When you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, you're actually an enemy of God and not a friend of God. And we need to understand that, that, that that's, you know, that's, that's part of it. Um, we, we face situations in life, though, um, even as believers, when we suffer. And that's always the big question. Why do good people suffer? Amen. Well, the biggest answer why good people suffer is because we live in a fallen world. Yeah. What do you think, Joey? I mean, I, well, it's not the answer people want to hear, but I mean, it, it's just a realization of what sin has done to God's creation. That's correct. Um, and we forget about that. Um, we we, we want to think that we, we uh, so what hurts us is that we have so many preachers that preach prosperity that and when we become Christ, you're going to be great. You have to follow five steps and it's going to work out great for you, but no. Right, you're going to be rich. You're never going to get sick. I mean, all these things, but but all this stuff out in this world is common to all of us. Yeah. I mean, I know godly, godly people that have, have, have gotten sick. I know godly people that have cancer, that Amen. are battling it right now. I mean, that are in a hospital right now. I'm trying to, you know, regain their, their health and their vigor, and it's not because God's against them. God is for them, but we live in a fallen world. Um, even the creation itself uh, groans in earnest Amen. expectation of the return of Jesus Christ. Yeah, we even the even, and, and this Man. was, I mean, when you think about that, even the creation is groaning in expectation, waiting for him to come back and make things as they should be. Amen. But, but the thing is, is that the fallenness of this world should make you yearn even more for the heaven. Come on. Amen. Amen. That's waiting for us. Amen. Praise God. The place where we'll, there'll be no more pain, no more suffering, no more of that. And verse 14 in chapter three of, um, First Peter tells us this, but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And that's a promise from God. Hey, you know, and there's times we're going to be suffering for righteousness sake. Um, why is that? Because the eyes of the Lord are upon you. Amen. When you when you when you're living it out, when you're living a sanctified life, when you're when you're serving Christ, um, even if you suffer for righteousness sake, you're blessed because the eyes of the Lord are upon you. The ears of the Lord are open to your prayers. Oh, my goodness. Amen. You know, man, I, I want him to hear my prayer and I want to work with God and not against God. I want to, you know, and that's part of prayer. The power of prayer is not to change God's mind, but a lot of times to change our mind. Amen. To change us, to, to remake us, to shape us, to, to make the new man and the new woman, transforming, transforming, transforming us. us. What I God mean, wants us to be. Uh, and, and it's one of the things that we have to remember, the context of this writing, is that Peter's writing not just to well-off or Christians just getting by. He's writing to, to slaves of abusive masters. Yes. Uh, he, he, he's a range of people. In Rome, it was horrible to be a Christian in this Being time. Being persecuted in a way that we have no earthly idea oh, man. how to even can't comprehend. Fathom. No, what they were what they were doing to them in Rome then. I mean, putting people in the Colosseum, feeding them to the lions. I mean, crucifying people. All this stuff that was that was commonplace back then. A Christian back then, if you if you were a believer and you were outspoken, 
you many times were martyred. Yes. I mean, it cost you your life. And to know that I, I was in, in a relationship where I was uh, a slave and beaten on a day for, for, for even continue on in, in Scripture, yes. it says, for even for doing good, I was beaten. Yes. I mean, I, what, what kind of hope do I have for life? If you're alive right now, you're being beaten down, maybe with sickness or, or bills or divorce, and you're thinking, what kind of hope? Peter's trying to give you hope that if you, if you, if you, if you, if you look, do good, no matter what's going on around you, right. God's eyes are on you, and he promises that, you know, <laughs> that he'll, he'll be a defense to anyone who asks for and this is have a, I mean, this is what God is trying to do. If we should suffer for righteousness' sake, you are blessed. I want to be blessed. Amen. I, I want to give hope to somebody who yes. maybe not have hope tonight. And God says, I don't care what you're going through. I know you're getting, you feel like there's no, you're at the bottom of the barrel and yes. you're looking up. And there's, you don't feel like you can get back up. He says, you're blessed. That's right. And the thing is, is that our circumstances, just like our circumstances, should not change our faith, right? Amen. Whatever's going on in our life out there should not be changing our faith. Our faith should not be impacted by the circumstances we find ourselves in. Our faith should be based upon a God that spoke the universe into existence, that, that created us fearfully and wonderfully, that, that, that sent His Holy Spirit to live in us, and that, that we can have hope through Him even in dire circumstances, even in, in places that, we, that it would seem hopeless. Amen. And yet through Christ we can have hope in Him. That's Even amazing. in the midst. In that valley, in the darkness, there's still hope. That's right. Why? Because the eyes of the Lord are upon you and the ears of the Lord are open to your prayers. That should give us hope, Amen. knowing that when we're serving him, when we love him, that, that we are, that's where he's at. Well, let's roll up the teach, te teaching point number three tonight. Think about your attitude toward others. Man, attitude adjustment. Woo. <laughs> So we talk about what we say, right? You got to make sure you use the right words. We talk about what we do, yes. how important that is. But then the third part, the attitude we have toward <laughs> others. <laughs> I have something come to my mind. It's a good thing my feet are off the floor. I'm just saying, right. brother. <laughs> it's like trying to get your kids to do something. This is what just came to my mind. Because one of this happened probably, I don't know how many parents, um, getting your kids to do something. And yet, yet the, you know, you've asked them to do it multiple times. I mean multiple. And probably enough that, you, you know, you probably say it in your sleep. But then when you finally get them to do it, you may have to yell. You may have to discipline. And then the attitude they do it in. Oh, yeah. It's horrible. Uh, it's, uh, 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 stomping their feet down yep. the hallway. Yep. I'm going to uh, grumbling. Uh, it, 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 how does that look? Have you ever seen a Christian try to force himself to do something they didn't want to do, and they have an ugly look on their face? And what's side? God think about us when we grudgingly do serve so. Him? When we grudgingly, oh, man. you know, follow Him? When we grudgingly, you know, I mean, it's like it's, there should be joy um, in our walk with Amen. Christ. I mean, if you're not look, if you're not experiencing joy in your walk, then go back to the beginning, go back to where you lost it, and find it. Amen. Find the Lord in the midst of all that. Because I'm here to tell you that, that we of all people should be the most joyful people on this planet because we serve the Most High God. Amen. We are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. I mean, think about that for a second. I mean, you know, all these things that God promises us, and, and we, should, we should have that, have that joy. So attitude. Um, verse 11 says, let him seek peace and pursue it. Peace is difficult. In a fallen world, Joey. Yeah. Amen. I mean, it's it's like almost impossible at times. Romans 12, 17 and 18, which we touched on this last week when we talked about how God says vengeance is mine and how to how to how to live that way. But Romans 12, 17 and 18 says, Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. And if it is possible, it doesn't mean it's always possible, yeah. but if it is possible. As much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Man, there is a whole, whole lot of ground that you can cover under if it is possible. Yes, sir. I mean, how many times have we went into something where our attitude was, I'm not seeking peace. I'm coming in for total destruction. You already had your mindset, had walk, my mindset before walking in, into the situation. My attitude was already... 
I'm coming for war. Yeah. I'm coming to burn the place down. I'm coming in. And we've seen that. I've seen that so many times in interactions with people where they're, where they're upset, where they've been hurt, where they're mad, where whatever's going on. And they've not come as much as possible to live peaceably. They've come as much as possible to, to get retribution, yeah. to get revenge, to get vengeance, to get whatever, to, to feel better because they have been wronged. But see, that's not the way of Christ. We have, to, we have to understand that. Um, Romans 14, 19, another one that goes along with this. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace. So pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. So not only are we pursuing the things that make peace one with another, but we're also looking for the things that will build one another up. Yes, strengthen one another. How can I strengthen my brother? How can I strengthen my sister? How can I strengthen those around me, even the unbelievers? I mean, see, this is not just not just us walking through the world. Well, I'm going to look for my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I'm going to pursue the things which make for peace between us as the body of Christ. I'm going to try to edify my brothers and sisters in Christ. What about those people that are lost around me? What do we do for them? Yeah. How, what is a soul worth? I, I love asking this question. What is a soul worth? You know, if I ask the people listening tonight, if I ask you listening to this, what is a soul worth to God? Can I tell you what I think it's worth? I think it is of an infinite value, and I'm going to tell you why. Because God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to die that we might have eternal life through Him. And if there was just one soul then he still would have went to the cross. Amen. Now we've got to ask ourselves in our walk with Christ, what's a soul worth to us? I mean, what's, what's a soul worth? I mean, if, you, if the only thing that God put you on this earth to do was to lead one person to Christ, and you had to suffer and you had to you know, eat crow and you had to be abused and spitefully used and persecuted and all these things. But in the end, you led that one person to Jesus Christ. It would be all worth it. Amen. In God's economy, in God's eyes, it would all be worth it. It's not quantity, it's quality. It's quality. It's how, how do we live it out? So when we look at these things, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. I, my question is, how do you react to people you disagree with? It's a good question. Very great question. I can talk. It's a very great question. <clears throat> it, 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 a lot of times we, 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 we feel like it's a battle. It's a fight. That I've got to yell louder. I've got to say more words. And then when it def I don't have any more facts or I don't think I can state my case anymore, start calling each other names then we attack the person we attack. we attack their character or we attack you know whatever or we know that there's something that that causes them great pain and oh. so we we hit that button <laughs> the pain button how can i ex get put them you know but the thing is is that we don't have to agree with one another to love one another and that and that's Amen. something that our country right now if we could ever figure out how to love one another and disagree respectfully man you talk about a transformation of the landscape of the United States. If we could just do that one thing, learn how to, dis uh, how to disagree with respect and love, that would be awesome. And this is definitely something Christians should be at the We should be trying leading. as hard as we can. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things which one may edify another. How do we, how do we live at peace with one another? How do we build relationships with one another? Because I can tell you that you will never argue anyone into the kingdom of God. You're never going to argue them in. You're never going to shame them in. You're never going to scare them in. You can tell them all about how hot hell is and all these things, and, and it doesn't matter. The only way that you'll ever lead someone to the Lord Jesus Christ is you have to show them you, the Savior's love. Amen. You've got to show them, who's Jesus in my life? What did he do for me, and what can he do for you? We love people into the kingdom. You can't scare them in. I mean, that, that works for a little while, but that's usually transitory. It's usually just, just a short time, and then they go back to the way they were because they never really were changed by the love of God. Amen. They were Amen. just kind of scared. And you have to think about... 
I, I was reading this, and it said the New Testament really focuses on peace. But it, 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 it says it began at the advent of Jesus. Amen. Um, it, uh, in Luke 2, 14, it calls him peace, said peace on earth. Yes. Uh, when Jesus was born, peace on earth. Um, 2 Thessalonians 3, 16 talks about, um, it calls him Lord of peace. Yes. Um, in Isaiah 9, 6, but before he was even born, it calls him Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Amen. And this is, this is our Savior. This is who grants, it to, who, who grants us his peace. In John 14, verse 27, um, uh, John tells us his peace, or Jesus, I'm sorry, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, uh, gives you, do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Because there, there's, a, there's a, um, uh, a fake peace, a, a, a peace that the world will try to give us. And, and, and dear Lord, we see too many people who search for this peace in, in alcohol, drugs, and, and, and other things other than Christ. That's right. And, and, and we, we, do, we do a disservice to God. We take away power. And, and we definitely don't get the, the, the full effect, the peace that only God can give. Um, and that's something we, uh, you have to focus on. And in your attitude, definitely, most definitely. Um, I think you might have read Psalm 34, 14 already. I didn't, but um, you can read it. But it, it, turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Yes. That, that, that pursuit. Yes. Um, Pursuing. We've got to decide what, what are we going to focus our eyes? What are we going to fix our eyes upon? I mean, we, we talk about the promises of God, but the promise, we've got to pursue the promise. We've got, we've got, to, we got to press on. We've got to press toward that which Christ has apprehended us for. I mean, you know, yes. he's, got a, he's got a purpose and a, and a plan and all those, and we've got to press toward that. And, and I feel like that, that we, a lot of times we know the promise, we know what the Word says, we know what the Lord says for us to do, but we don't do it because we, it's more pleasurable oh, man. Yes, to please sir. the flesh. And, and get our, you know, our two cents in or whatever than, than it is to please the Lord sometimes. Yes, sir. I mean, we, you know, and then how many people have I pushed out of the kingdom by mm. my attitude? Because, see, when we are out in this world, we may be the only Bible that anybody reads. I mean, they're looking at me. They say, well, what do you do for a living? I say, well, I'm a pastor of the church. Well, now they've got an expectation. And whether I like it or not, they have an expectation. And yeah. they're expecting to see Jesus Amen. through me. Even if they don't know anything about Christianity, if they don't know anything about it, when I say I'm a pastor of the gospel of Jesus Christ, they're looking to see Jesus through me. And depending on how they interact with me will depend on what they think of my Jesus Amen. that I definitely. say that I serve. We definitely hurt the kingdom. We can. If we go the wrong And way. I have. At times, I have, absolutely have, um, through through how I've reacted to people I disagree with, um, to to people that have wronged me. Because I, you know, I'm not supposed to revile. I'm supposed to, you know, come through this thing in a way level-headed, and reasonably, and and speak in love, and not hastily, and all these things. And yet, man, you get into the battle. <laughs> oh man, yeah. that flesh goes wild. Woo. It, it goes, it goes on. You know, um, do you hold grudges? Oh my goodness, if we could all just lay our grudges down. I mean, and everybody says I don't hold no grudge. Yeah, most people have a grudge somewhere. I mean, you could think of anything. I mean, <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody has done you wrong. Absolutely. In your life, somewhere, and somehow. There's somewhere. that one person out there that look. I've forgiven everybody else, but if that one comes by. Woo. Yeah. I mean, you're like, man, I can't forgive them, won't never forgive them, don't care how, you know, I mean, that's, and, and so, so that, when we hang on to things like that, that, that damages our walk with Christ, but it also damages the kingdom. Yes, sir. And, and you know, so, so we, need to, we need to understand that. Um, Die to yourself and let that grudge go with it. Just let it go. Yeah. You know, what's your attitude toward, toward others? Um, we, as followers of Jesus Christ, and I know this is this is tough, and I'm glad, like I said, that my feet are off the floor because I'm stepping all over my toes tonight, Brother yes, Joey. I mean, but but we need to be more patient than anybody else. Amen. My mom always told me patience is a virtue, son, and it was one that I've not really ever mastered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most impatient there is, probably. 
But we need to be more patient. We need to be more forgiving. Just as Christ forgave us, we need to forgive those around us. Um, we need to be more loving. Then, I mean, you know, people are looking for that. We need to be willing to yield at times. If it doesn't really matter, then let it go. Amen. I mean, sometimes we just hang on to something just because we know we're right. Well, sometimes it doesn't matter if you're right. I mean, if it's not a kingdom issue, let it go. Drop it. Most um, definitely. We need to be willing to bend at times. I mean, you know. As, as a Christian, you need to be the, the one who bends the most. Yes. I mean, you know, sometimes we got to bend over backwards. I mean, you know, that's just the way it is. That's what God calls us to. I mean, and we need to remember this. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Um, God notices what we do. He notices what we say. And he absolutely notices what our attitudes are one to another. Amen. I mean, he, 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 he notices all that stuff. So I, I want to go ahead and, and wrap things up. I know we're getting getting toward toward the end here, Joey. But I wanted to I wanted to close with with verse 17 from from chapter three in in first Peter. If we didn't if we didn't get anything else out of this, let's let's go here. Verse 17 in first Peter chapter three says, for it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. I mean, I, I, I think about that, that word right there because what that tells me is it says if it's the will of God, then that means that there are times that it could be the will of God for me to suffer for doing good. Amen. There could be times where I'm called to suffer for doing good. Um, can I say this? Doing good is always better than doing evil. Amen. Yes, sir. We don't fight evil with evil. I mean, we, we return um, good for evil. We're supposed to. I mean, there's, there's things we're, we're supposed to do. Um, striving to live in peace is always the better way. Yes, sir. I, it's just that's what God's called us to, um, to try to, try to, um, to do that. Um, but there are times when you're going to suffer. For doing good. Joe, you ever suffer for doing good, Ben? I, in a sense, I, 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 I don't want, I, not in the way I see other people. I, uh, I, I mean, you, you think of, I don't know, I think I was listening to Bonhoeffer. They were talking yeah, about Bonhoeffer, wow. I mean, think about that, leaving Germany. A great Christian mind, died very young, yes, 30s. He did. Yeah. yeah. Went back to Germany during the height of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of Hitler. of Hitler, I mean, you know, World War and, II. And the Nazis, yeah. uh, and to, to do what he felt God had called him to do. He had a great struggle because Bonhoeffer was a pacifist. Yes. And he had a great struggle with God trying to decide, remember, if it is possible, as much as is possible and you live peaceably with all men, right? So that means there's times where we may not be able to live. Peaceably. Yes, sir. And Bonhoeffer had to come to terms and decide, was it against his Christian testimony to serve in the um, ones that were, were coming against Hitler in, in, in the underground, you know, resistance to Hitler? And he got involved in that. Yeah. And eventually he was arrested. Yeah, he was kept in prison. And at the end, he was hung. And not only was he hung, but he was hung naked. Yes. I mean, just for something to talk about. Disrespect. Disrespect. I mean, just total. I mean, you want to disrespect somebody. It's one thing to execute them. It's another thing to execute them naked. Naked. I mean, but that was what that regime, you know, was about. So when you think about suffering and the things that our brothers and sisters in Christ have gone through. Man. Um, and the, the, that God calls it. God said it's for better. It's better to do that. It's better to suffer for doing good. Man, and he, I think of the suffering that he went through. Yes. I, I'm pretty sure, you know, they, they Nazis hated Christians. They oh, killed. Absolutely. They wanted. They did. They they tried to just mirror who Jesus was and and kill take away the truth of who he was, God incarnate. And 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 he stood the ground. He did. And yet we, I I I struggle with smaller things. Absolutely. We're not even there. I, no we're we're not even nowhere that near that. Think about um, that faith, that love, that peace that he had. It was given by God through his Holy Spirit that dwelled within that man. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Suffering like that. So learning to live in peace. Wow, what a night. I thought last week was tough. This week was tough too, Joey. I, I think, you know, I think, I think it was, it, it's equally, equally tough. When, when we close it down tonight, it matters what we say. Amen. Words are powerful. You know, be careful with your words. It matters what we do because many times actions do speak louder than words. And it matters what attitude we approach others with. And if we always expect the worst, then that's probably what, you'll get. what we're going to get. Amen. Amen. Well, Brother Joey, why don't you close us out tonight? Guys, uh, thank you for joining us. I, I, w going back to what Pastor Rick said, it was definitely a struggle uh, getting ready for this because we're studying with reading the Scripture. Read the Scripture. See what yes. it says. Yes. Evaluate, analyze your life because that's what I was doing the whole time studying this. It's thinking, man, so many other people have it worse off than I do. Yes. So I pray, guys, that this, it, it, no matter where you're at on the spectrum, where, where you fall and where your life is, that you listen to God and know that let, let, leave retaliation in God's hands. Amen. That's right. Seek peace. Yes. When it, when it, when it, when even when you feel like you've been wrong, you have, the, by the world standards, a right to stand against these people. Seek peace. Because above all else, they don't need to see you or your opinion. They need to see God, a loving God, a saving God. And, I, and that's what I urge in you yes. tonight as we yes. close out. And we're going to end it with prayer, guys. Um, once again, thank you for joining us. Absolutely, uh, yes. And, and join me as we pray. Yes. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you, God, yes, for Father. God, really eye-opening eye um, scripture from Peter. Lord God, yes. in First Peter in chapter 3, Lord God, I, I pray, Lord Jesus, that we can take these words that Peter wrote down, Lord God, that you gave him. And, Lord God, let us use them yes. to, to, to edify, to build us up, Lord God. So, Lord God, not that we can... It, it can do it for ourselves, but, Lord God, we can go out and, and live a life that it, it is honoring and glorifying yes, you, Lord God, God, that people can see who you are, that loving God, Lord Jesus, yes. a, 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 one that gives mercies every day, new, Lord yes. God, and that grace that is beyond understanding. Yes, thank Lord God, you. I pray that in, our, our, in our, our congregant tonight, those who may be watching, uh, maybe on, on YouTube, Facebook, Lord God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that, Lord God, if they may not know you, that, that they... They see, Lord God, yes. the, the struggle, the, the loss yes. without you. Yes. Lord God, and, and see this as an opportunity to trust in you. Yes. Repent you, from their sin. Yes. Lord God, we love you so much. Yes, Thank you do. for another great night and a great word from you. Yes. Lord God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. tonight was challenging, but I also pray that we gave you good biblical insight for how to live out your faith. So we just ask and encourage you to tune in next Wednesday night for another topic, and I just pray that God be with you on it. God bless you.